Hi everybody, Lydia here with Build Show Network and today we're going to be talking about butt joints. So I feel like butt joints, depending on where you live, they can have different prep and different things going on. But I will say this, if you have any questions about butt joints and what the manufacturers recommend, check out the USG handbook. They have a whole section there on butt joint prep and what you should be doing with your butt joints. So when we look at a piece of drywall, we've got the gypsum in there, we've got the paper. And then when we have a piece, there is this edge right here, which is a nice finished edge, which is like our beveled edge, that's our flat edge. So these two edges go together. And then there's also cut edges. So you have to cut the board to make it fit, or sometimes there's just the raw edge that's left off the board, which would be like a factory edge. So this is a factory edge. That's just where the board ends and that's what it looks like. So butt joints are where two edges come together that don't have a bevel like our flat. So as you can tell here, this would be a butt joint. It's two pieces of board without a bevel butting together, hence the word butt joint. So when we are prepping butt joints, it's really important to kind of, number one, you want to stagger them. You don't want to be railroading your butt joints. If you're using butt board, you can get away with it. And, and butt board is by Trimtex. We'll have a whole episode about that later because it's a product in and of itself. But butt joints break on the stud and then they can have some like loose paper, some issues going on here. So what we choose to do and what USG recommends doing is we go ahead and V-back this butt joint. So we take a knife at an angle and kind of make a V and then clean that up and leave a little space. Because what happens is drywall board will expand and contract. So depending on your temperatures, your moisture in the air, this board will expand and contract depending on what's going on. So if you're hanging your butt joints extremely tight, you're gonna have more risk of cracking. That board's gonna move and push it up against itself because gypsum in and of itself is, you know, it has water properties. Um, it, it's not, it doesn't catch on fire because it releases moisture because that's what gypsum does. So if you have very humid like climate, you have a lot of temperature swings, changes, this board is also going to change because it's made out of, you know, natural materials. So it's important that you're giving yourself enough space for those butt joints to expand and contract and move a little bit with what you've got going on weather-wise. So we don't hang these, at least not here. Some people do it and it's not a problem, but we're not gonna hang them like real tight like that because what happens is there's no space for any movement or anything. And what it'll do is it'll just crack straight down the center. And butt joints are notorious for cracking. If you're gonna have issues, it more than likely is going to be with your butt joints. You also don't want to be putting butt joints like in spots where it's going to just naturally crack. So when you walk into a house, you can kind of see those spots. There's just stress spots in the house where you just know if you put a butt joint there, it's just going to crack straight down it. There's also some things that come into play with the hangers, knowing how to hang the job so you're not going to have as many cracks. Anything off of a corner, a butt joint off a corner is always going to crack. It's just that natural line that it's going to go down. So we will go take a look on the wall. We'll see how we prep the butt joints, what they look like and why that's important. All right, so here's our flat right here and then here's our butt joint. So as you can tell, that whole sheet cannot fit on this wall. So they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna have to have their factory edge here. So this was probably just the end of that board and then probably the end of this board too that they had from scrap. So what they do here is they go ahead and V them. So you can see there's just a very slight V, which then allows for the mud to get back in there. And then, so when we're expanding and contracting, we're not expanding and contracting against like the sheetrock. We're just expanding and contracting with that mud in there, but it's hot mud, so it's not gonna be moving very much. And it doesn't shrink very much because it is hot mud. So it really is the, the best thing to pre-fill with. And then it gets taped with paper tape. Paper tape is stronger and performs better than mesh. I don't know how many houses I've seen that I've walked in and there's mesh on the butt joints and it's just cracked the whole entire way because mesh is so flexible when paper tape is strong and the bond's just gonna be better. Um, so we tape these with paper tape, let them dry, and then you gotta start coating them out, which is a whole another issue with butt joints. But prepping and really taking your time with these is absolutely the way to go. You wanna clean up any fuzzy paper, um, you know, you just want to like, just kind of handle them a little bit gentler and they'll turn out a lot better in the end. And we can actually go look out in the garage because they did something different in there being a garage. In the garage, sometimes the hangers will railroad a joint. So this is called railroading a joint as you've got one big, long, continuous butt joint. It's a garage. 
Nobody really cares. It makes it easier for us to finish because instead of cut, 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 we can just do one long butt joint. Don't do this inside when you're finishing interiors because it's just not made to go like that. You really want to stagger your butt joints. You have much higher risk of cracking with railroading. But we can also kind of see here, this is how it looks like when it's hung. Um, they've gone ahead and beat it back. There's no pre-fill on this yet. Depending on the garage, sometimes we pre-fill, sometimes we don't. If they're real deep, we will. But what happens is if you don't pre-fill this, the tape will suck down and real deep and you can like have blisters and just a lot of issues with it. So this is just kind of a hung, non-pre-filled butt joint. So we go back through pre-fill and then tape with paper tape. That's pretty much it with butt joints. Um, VM, leave yourself a little bit of space. Um, check out the USG handbook. It really is extremely helpful when it talks about dealing with butt joints. They're not trying to, you know, cause you guys more work or get out of warranty claims. They're just trying to make sure you guys have the best finish and you're set up the best for whatever your job is. So um, that's pretty much it for butt joints. They, they're um, kind of a pain and we'll talk about it more in another episode, but that's kind of prep and, and how you take care of them. Anyway, that's it for me this week. You can catch me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube under Drywall Shorty. And I will catch you all next week on the Build Show Network.